Hello and welcome. My name is Usman. This is TV Loves Me Talks, my podcast series where we'll be covering a whole range of different topics. For the first podcast, I thought I'd go with something I actually know about. We're going to be talking about fasting and the myths surrounding fasting and basically weight loss in general, including a few things I wish I'd known earlier would have saved me months of eating salads. So what you may or may not know is I'm actually a qualified pharmacist and I have been for more years than I care to remember. Wow. So I kind of think I know a little bit about this. I've done a lot of research for this particular podcast. I've been reading like medical journals and and things specifically to do with fasting and weight loss. So if you're interested, carry on listening. First thing people usually say about fasting. Isn't that starvation? Fasting is not the same as starvation. Starvation is when you do not know when your next meal is coming from. So people think that when you're fasting, your body goes into some sort of starvation mode where your metabolism goes down and your body starts to store more energy as fat. This is a myth. When you're fasting, your metabolism actually goes up because there's a release of adrenaline. So when adrenaline increases, so will your metabolism. As a side note, your metabolism only decreases when you severely restrict your calories. This is when your body goes into low metabolism state because it tries to match the energy coming in to the energy output. So going back to the starvation mode. Fasting is dangerous for your body. It's not. Our bodies are designed to be able to carry on functioning without food. So the body's got two different types of energy, the sugars and fats. So when you're fasting, this is what's used up. So firstly, you have a store of sugar in your liver as glycogen. So that's broken down. And when that finishes, fats start to get broken down. So to be a little bit more specific, There is about 2,000 calories uh, worth of energy stored in the liver as glycogen, which for a female is like a full day's worth and for a man is just, just under a day's worth. Wow. So when this energy is all used up, then your body starts to break down fat. So the average person has between 50,000 and 100,000 calories worth of energy stored as fat in their body. Let's take a second to put that into context. The average person of the average build could survive for up to a month without food. So this myth about starvation mode is exactly that. So the next thing people think about fasting or intermittent fasting is... Fasting will make your blood sugar dangerously low. Okay. Unless you're a type 1 diabetic who takes medication, it is not possible for you to have true hypoglycemia, i.e. low blood sugar. Why life off? For most of us, the symptoms that we have of low blood sugar are actually related to other things. Another myth. When you eat after fasting, it will turn straight into fat. No. So when you eat after a fast, the first thing your body wants to do is to replenish the glycogen in the liver and the muscles because that's the easiest and fastest. Only when this is full, which is about 2000 calories, is the excess sent to be stored as fat. So after you fast, as long as you don't eat more than 2000 calories, you will not put on weight. The problem is for most people, including myself, this is the most difficult part because after you've been fasting all day, you want to eat the most fattiest foods to satisfy yourself. So let me now move on to the most important topic. It's important because the things I've learned have shown me that Everything that I thought about fasting to do with weight loss has been completely incorrect. So even me, because I didn't really look into it, I just kind of read, you know, fitness blogs and things like that, followed their advice about trying to lose weight and it never worked. And now I know why. So let's talk about fasting, like intermittent fasting in terms of someone who goes to the gym or someone who's trying to lose weight. One of the myths even I believed was that Fasting will lead to muscle wastage or your muscles will shrink. Complete, complete lie. 
we're going to talk about how that's not possible a bit later on so let's let's boil down to the basics here gaining or losing weight is specifically to do with your diet and diet only gaining or losing muscles is to do with exercise oh my god if you do not exercise your muscles will not grow or if you don't exercise for long enough they will your body thinks i don't need this muscle therefore they will get smaller same thing to do with weight as we've discussed the more you eat once you go over a certain amount the excess food gets stored as fat if you eat less and give the body the opportunity to go into a fasting state once all of the quick energy the sugar or glycogen is used up then your body starts to burn fat it's as simple as that as an example no matter how much you exercise you can still be overweight so there's people out there who have amazing endurance who can run a marathon but they're still overweight because their diet's not great whereas they exercise loads so if you're worried about muscle loss then exercise and if you want to build muscle then exercise so the biggest myth is that if you fast long enough your body will burn muscle for energy wow no so for your body to function it uses carbs fats ketones for energy but the majority of energy actually comes from carbs when you fast the first thing the body does it increases the amount of energy it gets from carbohydrates and once they're finished it switches over to fat in fact the amount of protein the body uses actually decreases because it tries to conserve muscle protein is needed in the body for other functions and fat is specifically there for energy so why would your body use protein think about it like this you're hungry food is potentially a few miles away why would your body break down your muscle say from your legs for energy to keep you going until your next meal or to help you find your next meal it just doesn't make sense for your body to disadvantage itself let me give you another example think of fats as logs that you've stored away for winter and the first time it gets cold instead of using these logs you start chopping up your tables and chairs to use as energy instead no right now that i think about it like that i can't believe i actually thought that was true i thought there was some sort of muscles being burnt during ramadan and all the hard work i'd done in the gym was going to waste yeah i was young and naive and reading too much crap on bodybuilding websites I'm not that I'm a bodybuilder far from it so in conclusion fat is a food store and used for energy that will be used first once all the sugar and glycogen is used up not protein the only time protein will ever be broken down for energy is when your body fat percentage goes less than 4%. You're talking about those people who tan themselves and go on stage in a very small underwear and pose with their muscles where you can see every vein. That's 4%. Me, you, that doesn't apply to us. Another thing people talk about when you are fasting you have no energy how are you supposed to do anything? But as we've discussed your body is still producing energy for you to use at a normal rate so i don't know if this applies to intermittent fasting because i haven't done that but i definitely will be now after ramadan finishes but generally the feelings of low energy are to do with sleep deprivation because when you're fasting religiously there you know you have to get up in the middle of the night and there's a lot more praying etc so that's more to do with that because if you look at it hormonally our body adjusts for that so like i talked about previously increased adrenaline more adrenaline more energy your energy stores are high like i said um, because your body's now burning fat so there's no there's no actual loss of energy so there's an increase in growth hormone which is actually a very important point that i should have talked about in the last section so the more growth hormone actually preserves your lean muscle and bone so it prevents your body from breaking down muscle and bone because it actually needs it and growth hormone in general is something which kind of makes you look and feel younger so if that's not the biggest benefit of fasting i don't know what is 
The other hormonal change is decreasing cortisol. Cortisol in layman's terms is known as the stress hormone. So if you decrease cortisol, it decreases anxiety, depression, and things like that. So if you want to look young, easily lose weight, be less stressed, consider intermittent fasting. That's all I've got for this one. I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave me some comments about what you liked, what you didn't like. Obviously, it's my very first one. I've never kind of done podcasts before, so I'm new to all the technology and the equipment and things like that. And if you've got anything about topics that I could discuss, that'd be great as well. You can catch me on all my socials. It's all uh, TV loves me. I was going to say I'll see you next time, but that kind of doesn't work. So I guess it's you'll hear me next time or something like that. But anyway, bye-bye.